Hello, uh, my name is Gavin Taylor and this is a little introduction to the Resonophonic Square Neck Guitar what a strange word, or Dobro um, This instrument here, I shall just give a quick orientation um, of what the instrument is Take this uh, little title off Okay, uh, it's a, got these funny two names Dobro, which is a brand name as far as I was aware that used to produce them and it got um, commonly referred to as that because the actual name for the instrument, Resonophonic Square Neck Guitar, was, as you can imagine, not easy to remember. So we'll just run through the idea here. Here you can see this is a square neck, it's not round. Uh, you don't play it with your thumb round the back. Um, the other word, Resonophonic, is about this metal circle, and you'll see this on a variety of instruments, and it's called Resonophonic. And it's like a, inside there there's a kind of thing that looks like a speaker that sits on top of it, and then what they call a spider bridge on top, or a bridge on top of that, and then this cover on top of it, so it's kind of squeezed together, and that sits in a hole. And that makes this particular sound. But you can get that on normal guitars, or on all sorts of instruments, they'll put this in. So the characteristic is it's a square neck guitar with a resonophonic chamber. Okay, And you play these, um, you can sit, sit down with them, or you can put a strap on and stand up with them. It's a bit um, sort of funny when you're standing up. You sort of put your arm underneath there and sort of underneath there to kind of control it a bit. But you can stand up and play them as well. They generally sort of slant down. But um, anyway, that's not what we're really here to see. But it's a little orientation around the instrument. Let's just show a little bit more. Um, if I uh, cut to a two shot, I'll just show you some other things. Um, picture in picture. Let's cue that up. Um, things that we need for it. And the little bottom thing, if I just show the little. Yeah. We need some finger picks and a thumb pick. So here I've got a very big, heavy thumb pick. I use incredible, the, the heaviest ones I can find. And these are Golden Gate, I believe. They're an American company. I have to import them. And every year or two, I buy about 25. And they're really big thumb it and they don't twist around my thumb. I can put loads of pressure there and they don't twist and the normal thumb picks twist around my thumbs really easily. Um, I find myself having to play quite loud in various situations or just generally a lot of dynamic playing through the strings um, and it just twists too easy. I don't like the insecurity of not uh, doing that but I'm sure I, my technique should be improved for that. Then I wear three finger picks. Now most um, uh, Dobro players will really only use two with these first two fingers. But coming from guitar and knowing that I, I, I'm used to using three and when I work with it, I'll end up doing lots of things with this third finger anyway. So not having one will just make me blister the hell out of that finger. I'd suggest uh, if you're turning, you know, just starting with this instrument that you definitely play around with getting some different types of finger picks and thumb picks um, to get used to it because as soon as you try and play uh, to any, you know, with anyone for any length of time, you will blister. You know, you might think, well, I play the guitar lots in, in things and uh, it'll be fine, but you're far more likely just to blister the hell out of your fingers and um, playing along here, twanging away on strings. Um, yeah, so I suggest definitely get, getting used to these things. Okay, so where the hand sits back here, just a little bit of orientation. This video is really an introduction to the. Uh, the tuning as much as anything else, but usually there's a little bridge that sits over this on this chamber over the strings. You let let my hand rest there. It allows me to mute by rolling my hand onto the strings, effectively like that. Okay, so let's just cut back. Uh, in fact, no, we need one more thing to show, and then we have the slide bars that we have. Oops, let's get that in shot. Um, this one here uh, has a contour with a beveled edge here, a tilt. You get ones that are sheer and straight on both sides. You actually get round ones that are just big round bars, and they're more for pedal steels and lap steels, which are the electric versions, and you get ones with more strings. Um, and I've never actually played around with one of those, so I'm, I'm you know, out of the, the ones that I've played with, they're straight barred ones along and uh, ones with these ones on. You get various metal, uh, sorry, um, wooden grips, and a few different designs of this. I'll just show you why I why this the the value that I find in in this beveled edge there. I'll just zoom in a bit more on the on the neck. Oops, it is not over there. Come on, camera. There we go. 
as I play. That bevel allows me to move this way, like I'm tilting it up. If I have a square edge design on that, it's there's a lot more edges to deal with. I, if I'm to push up the way, I have to go flat to do it. So it allows me to move in a tilted position without that edge being there. So as I move from this position like that, I'm moving around the contour of this, this slant there. Okay, so that's a little bit about the, uh, uh, the rudiments of the instrument and what you require to play it. Uh, we're going to move on to what this title says, which is this open G high um, or high G tuning. Sometimes it's called bluegrass tuning as well. And this deviates from a normal uh, open G that you might find on uh, a standard guitar. So you might do open G tuning on a, a normal guitar, which uh, if you're uninitiated with it would go E, A, D, G, B, E. The dobro tuning goes, uh, this tuning goes G, B, E, G, B, E. Now for the keen ear to use, there will be three strings that are the same as standard tuning guitar, the D string, the G string and the B string, these four ones here, or three ones there, okay? What would normally be a low E string has come up. Usually G would be the third fret on a normal guitar. So we've taken that pitch all the way up to G, okay? So this pitch is usually a lot lower on the guitar. When you do open G on a standard uh, guitar, that usually goes down to D, i.e. you take that note goes down. Here it's going up. The next string on an open G on a normal guitar, that A string would usually go down to a G. In this case, it's going up to a B. So those two have had more, a lot more tension put on them. Okay? I use quite very thick strings for this tuning. Different um, tunings generally require, you know, broadly, you want different types of gauge strings to, to bring out characteristics of uh, different types of tunings. So not all strings will facilitate all tunings. Um, yeah, I'll leave the strings out of it for now. Okay, um, then, so we've got this D, G, B in the middle of it, and then a high string here that would normally be an E string. Okay, it's gone down to a D, just like you would do on a normal guitar um, open G tuning. So what would you be an E string has gone down. So it's really the bass strings that you're adding a lot different tension to. So if you're playing around with this at, at home on a normal guitar just to hear this, the tuning sounds, be careful. You're adding a lot of tension here, okay? And the strings may slap, snap, you know, um, especially if you've got old strings that have been um, sit languishing around for a while. You're putting a lot more tension, particularly on that low E. Um, but, you know, at your own risk. And um, there's nothing to be lost from it other than a string. Uh, it's no great shakes. Um, uh, you are putting more tension on the neck, so a really bad, you know, if the guitar is in bad condition up at this joint. Oops, we can get that in, you know, at this joint here. If it's in really bad shape, the guitar, the neck is going to bow a little bit more. For slide, that's not such a problem, but uh, I would, if your neck's wobbly already, or one way or another, you can put the, your hand on the back of the neck and, re and really alter the, the pitch by putting pressure on it. You probably don't want to, um, to put uh, so much more tension on it. Anyway, that caveat aside, I'm going to record a little bit of sound um, to demonstrate uh, the dobro on, on top of it and the tuning. I'm just going to swap quickly to the guitar and record a little loop that, that we can orientate around. Um, just so as the video proceeds, we've got some musical context to work with. As part of my teaching, I always like to ensure that whenever you're practicing something, there's some musical, useful musical attribute that you are reinforcing as you do it. Even if it's just counting, uh, sticking to, to metrocomic, you know, a very stable time. Um, that's uh, valuable. Let me just reposition the other camera as well. Might as well, um, as we have them. So you can see what I'm going to do. Okay, so there's a standard guitar. We've got E, A, D, G, B, E. It's these three strings here, D, G, B, that are the same as the tuning we're working with just now. I'll take that tightling off just in case it's confusing anyone. So it's just standard tuning. Okay, and I'm just going to record 
a very simple thing in G. We're going to be, uh, the, the dobro is tuned in G, so we're going to work in the key of G, not in C. Um, now, at other times it's valuable to, to start off with in C, but in this lesson we're going to jump straight into G. So I'm going to record a little pattern that um, we can orientate around as we're going. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. One, two, three, four. <laughs> turn the um, audio send on to the loop station. Let's just do that again. Two, three, four. Help if I had the sound up for that. <clears throat> Forgive me for that. One, two, three, four. got is something playing G a lot. Okay, so it's just G in the background. Now the notes that we're going to hear are the core notes in a G chord. It's the G scale, and bar one extra note. Three, five, six, five, four, 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 three, five, three, one, three, those would be the three notes in the scale. Just to put that in context for those that are completely in, uh, unintroduced, if I sing the scale along with, with this from G major, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the scale, and I'm just giving each note a number. One, two, three. You can hear as I pass through two, it's not particularly harmonious with it, but three is. It's because a chord is made up from thirds. One, three, and five. It's like we're skipping. One, three, five. And we're missing the two and the four. Now the riff on the bass, boom, da, do, is playing up to a sixth and back down. Five, six, five, boom, three, five, six, five, three, boom. So it's all making a sound of G, really. The sixth is a little uh, flourish, if you like. And that chord, the strum, is just a little G sound. Okay. It's actually just the root in the fifth, what we call a five chord. Okay. But that's all just background to say we've got nothing more complex than G is what we're hearing. Okay, so I'm going to turn back to the dobro for a while, and we shall return to the idea of which I'm supposed to be adequately presenting you which is this open G tuning. Okay, let me just reposition these for the dobro and not... Uh... Not the guitar, you can see everything that's going on. So I've got all my goodies together here. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, much before anything else, is just have a little play around so you can hear the characteristic of this. Okay. Just 
some ideas of the sound of uh, the instrument that I'm making, okay? And <clears throat> from there, I'm just going to sort of talk a little bit about some of the ideas that I've found. Now, you heard a lot of this note. Just targeting notes in and around that, around lots of other things. And really what they're happening is the same sort of pitches that we've got here. G, Bs and Ds, because that's what the music is doing. Um, it's not going anywhere, it's not going to any other harmonies. So I'm having to return to those notes. We're about to turn to a tool that helps us see these pitches better. But you can see these sound very similar to the 135 that we're singing. scale with all those other ones would be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is the same as one in this newer uh, terms. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's our scale. I'm just going to stop the music there. Now we're going to turn to a, um, a tool that I think is going to help us very much um, orientate around where all these notes are and yeah, allow us to visualise things uh, a bit clearer. Now, you can do this on paper, obviously, but there are tools that are around in the day and age, as we all know, it being... For posterity's sake, we're talking the beginning of the 2020, we're now in February, um, that are going to be helpful. So I'm just going to bring up a shot that uh, shows that. Uh, let's just take that one off. Nope, need that one in. That one's supposed to be there. That one can go off. forgetting how to do this. So just so you can see what I'm faffing around, I've got this three shot set up, three cameras, and I'm forgetting how I move them around. In fact, let me just cut to that camera shot. Okay, so this is the interface that we've got. It's called Guitar Scientist. And I'll just cut to a blank page with it. It starts like this. And it's a useful interface, oops, it is, that allows us and go up, allows us to lay out any fretboarded instrument. So anything that is, um, uh, yeah, got strings on it, and we want to add in, um, sorry, I'm just trying to bring up a shot here, which is why I'm uh, being slightly vague. Uh, let's see if I can get this right. That one. It allows us to lay out the, the pitches of any given um, instrument across them. I'm just struggling to <laughs> orientate my cameras. Come on. It's that I want to do, but with me. Uh, I'm sorry, and even that's the wrong camera. Um, it should be... Picture and picture. And that one wants to be that. Finally! If the man can learn to operate his equipment. <clears throat> So it's Guitar Scientist, and as you can see, it's a fretboard orientated um, tool. If I take myself away here, um, you can see it's got six strings and a fretboard here. Down the bottom, we've got an array of buttons. Fretboards brings up some things that we can orientate about fretboards. First thing I'm going to do is just add, take a couple of frets, and you can see that's going to extend it. This 12th fret here. It's got double dots like any instrument. That tells us that's the octave, i.e. the pitch that's on this open string is the same as the pitch there. 
So that's helpful there. There's a few things we can do here. First of all, I can put on captions underneath, so I might be able to title this. I can add fretboards or remove them, flip them left hand, right hand, things like that. At the top here, we can add a title. Um, tuning is one thing we're going to have to work at. So you can see there, it's got the standard tuning for guitar there. However, our tuning um, that we're wanting to work with is not standard tuning. We are wanting to turn that to the Dobro's tuning. So we're going to um, move that so that if we remember at the bottom, as we talked about before, here's that E. I'll just move the diagram over so you can see my face while I'm talking and the interface that I'm changing. Here, this E, we want to take that. Can you remember which way it goes? Does it go up or down? Pause, pause, pause. It goes up to G, E, F, G. So up to G. Come on, little interface. There you go. Now, sometimes on this particular device, I've had problems with this, this particular slide bar. But the A string, for our tuning, it goes up to B. There we go. In a wonder it did it this time. D stays the same. That's the same as standard tuning. G stays the same as standard tuning. B stays the same as standard tuning. Our E, unlike the low E, which went up to G, goes down to D, just like you might do on a normal open G tuning on a standard guitar. Okay, that changes the, the, the application's understanding of where notes are, pitches are, to allow us to um, have the tuning for the instrument that we're working with. Okay, um, we've got, the first thing I'm going to do next is use this root selection. So in music, we're wanting to tell it which key we're in, what to apply one as. You know, there's a lot of different notes on the fretboard. You can see them all mapped out in shade there. In the notation element, that allows you to do note names or intervals. I've got it set to note names right now, so they're just shaded out, showing you all the potential options. We're working in G, so I'm going to select root, and then I can just hit any old G. I'm going to hit that open string. Okay, I can shade it out or not. Now the interface knows that that's G is the one. That's the root of our system. Okay, I'm going to jump along here to scale and walk you through this. This is really helpful for a complete beginner to to be able to um, lay out an instrument of all the particular pitches on a given scale uh, and be able to see where all the notes are. Maybe play around with them and do things, but it's very helpful for that. that it's got preordained structures of them. There's apps that do these things as well, but I find this very flexible uh, in terms of what, it, what you're allowed, to, how you can lay things out. Okay, here you'll see this as it drops down, it says modal, and there's the, all these funny names. The important part for, for this, we're not gonna deal with anything more than what we're going to click is Iona, and that's the same as what we call the major scale. Okay, so I'm going to click that. And you can see it's shaded all these numbers, are intervals, much like I was counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll see it's, it's only got the numbers there that have no flats on them, no flats or sharps. The app can distinguish whether it's, you can call things flats or sharps, but they're by default laid out as flats here. But notice the numbers that it's chosen there, when I chose Iona, the major scale, are just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, eight is the same as one, so it only really needs to do that. Okay. Um, from there, there's some variations that limit the area that you can apply it to. We're not, I'm not doing that just now. What I'm going to do is just hit generate scale. Okay. And what we'll see is that table, that fretboard, has got populated. However, my one, let me just clear that. Somewhere along the line, I've selected um, something other than G as the root. So up here, where is it? We usually get a pile of symbols there. Uh, I'll just hit reset. Yeah, and I've still got the same tuning there. I'm going to hit root select. Click on a note. And I'm going to say one is G. Okay, select scale. Generate. There we go. Now it's swapped it to numbers. I'm just going to go back to notation here. Get rid of that up there. And on this palette, we can see note names or intervals. I can turn it to note names or intervals. I'll just leave it on note names for a second, and we'll talk about that for a second. We can see our tuning, GBD, GBD. And then in this particular scale of G major, Unlike C major, we have one sharp note called F sharp. Now we're starting with G major because the, the tuning of the instrument is inherently G. That's not to say you can't play all the other scales. But as a starting point, 
it's an easy way to approach this instrument. Um, I don't always do that with some students, depending on their musical history, start them with C. And what we're really looking at is the orientation of some of this information at the bottom there. I'm going to turn it back to, to numbers just now. Um, numbers are useful ways to, to deal with music because they immediately make it the same for all scales. You know, if I'm playing C major, it still has a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a bit like do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Um, so they're translatable from one scale to another in that way. Um, whereas note names, each key's got different note names. Okay, so <clears throat> what you should note here is it looks like a, a bewildering array of, of information there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, one thing that's helpful about this to, to, to kind of isolate what we're interested in is I can click on this the colors and say I'm going to collect a different color and I'm just going to highlight the information that we're particularly interested in. There's another, other ways that we could have done this by limiting the, the fretboard, but I find I generally faff around a lot more when I'm doing that. So I'm just going to highlight the scale that I played earlier, the basic major scale, if I can keep this application to the foreground, please. It always seems to want to do it twice. Select G. Hey, come on. Play ball. That's a touch screen, so I'll see if that seems to work a little bit smoother. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see there that the, the notes that I've selected in blue are the ones that I'm actually going to play. So I'm going to return to the instrument, and we're going to play through now that we've got this diagram set up. Um, there's a couple of other diagrams that are, will, will be as, as useful to run through. But let me just cut to um, three shots so that I can get everything in place. It'll take me just a moment to orientate around all this again. Uh, which camera should be what? that one there we go okay I'm just about to see that diagram there and I'll just move these to where we need them so this camera we're gonna see the fretboard nice and clearly And the other camera, we are going to be able to focus in on my hands so you can see the picking that I am doing for that nice and clearly, how the hand gesture works here. I find generally there's a, a lot of inf um, focus paid attention to the, the, the fretboard when people are orientating around information, just like I've spent time orientating around the, the data, if you like the layout of the notes that we're going to be using on the uh, on the fretboard and it tends to focus the mind far more on uh, the fretboard than it does on the other hand in terms of how we're plucking things and how we're playing but there's so much about the nuance of playing that is about how it's played uh, with your hands okay okay so I've got my open G string. I'm just going to play, do this musically, so I'm going to turn that loop back on. Okay. So I've got this open G string. Okay. Then I've got the second fret on that string, which is two. Now you see that sounds quite dissonant against the chord because two is not in the chord. One, three, and five is in the chord. Okay. So one, two, three is the next string. If you look at that diagram, it's the next string. So I've only had to play two, you know, open string and one fretted note on that string. Then I'm on to the next string for, for uh, the third, or B. Then the first fret is C. And you can hear that sounds out against the chord as well. So you hear that sort of tension that it sits against it? Because one, three, and five are the notes in the chord again. So one, two, three, four. And I'm finally at five, the D string. And I'm back to sounding harmonious again. Okay. Now the next note, funnily enough, the sixth is outside, 
But that last little boom ba dum part isn't playing it. That part. So that six isn't quite as tense as it is as it sounds. Okay, I'm up to six. Then if I just move the camera, the one higher pitch that we have to accommodate is that fourth fret on the D string. This F sharp. It sounds a little funny against the chord there as well because it's not inside the chord. Eventually when that chord includes it, one, three, five, seven, as we skip numbers, it would be there as well. And then I'm back to G, the open G string. Then A, that's the second. B, the third. C, the fourth. D, the fifth. the sixth, F sharp the seventh, and the fifth fret there is the root again, one. So I played that scale descending down with some sort of slightly muted notes around it to make it sound evocative. I'll go up. So there I kind of melodically used the, 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 the scale, but it's still the scale. I'm just going to go up, clean it, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, sharp, G, second octave, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, sharp, E, G, J, not quite getting that. So there's my scale. Okay. I'm going to go back to improvising. I'll try and do some relatively slow improvisation. Hopefully you can see the kind of notes that I'm using. I'm going to try and stick to that. So I'll try and be really restrictive with myself about where I'm playing. Here, which is that red, first red five on that string, I see two, three, four, and then the next note, that five. And it's the same pitch as the next string, and that's the next diagram we'd come on to. So I didn't really mean to hit that one because I'm just going to try and use these bluish notes that we've got. diagram we're going to look at, which I've just done pre kind of done, let me just it's going to get slightly skewed here, is, um, let me go back to this, this diagram, which is that the same fretboard that we laid out, and all I've done is gone around it and selected everything that said 1, 3 and 5. Just randomly, clear. I could clear it, start with a blank one, set it to G major, so it's all grayed out notes behind, and then just make sure I set, hit one, three, and five, or if it's letters, all the GBDs that I can find. Yeah, and just select them, so I can just alter them here, so it would start off with a blank page, and I would just be going hit five, yeah. Make sure one is set to G, so hit the root select, and find G, or knowing where G is, even if it says one set to intervals, it would say one here or another number, it might say a variety of different things, but you would click that and it should turn to one, or if it's set to letters, it would then say, it should say G. Then you'd be selecting everything that's GBD, 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 or fives, threes and ones, one, threes and fives. 
Okay. These are, are all the, the, the ways to play G major without any other elements on the dobro. We've got the open strings that we've dealt with already. Okay. Then we've got this information here, this 351, 351. These are what we call inversions, if I play them, rather than the first, the, the one being the first note. Three is the first note. Then it's five and one. Hopefully that's um, clear to you all. The fourth fret is B. Third fret here is D. Fifth fret here is G. Five, three, one. If I go back to the application and change it back to notation, you can't quite see that as I do it, but I'll, it's off screen. Change to note names. Everything's turned back to GBDs. Okay, same information. I'll leave it there for a while. So I've got B, D, G, B, D, G. Then further up the fretboard, not further that way, this way. Okay, the seventh fret there, the third dot up. I've got, I'll just zoom out so that's really abundantly clear where I am. Okay, so here, I'm at the seventh fret D. Next fret up on the next string is my G. Next fret up on the next string is B. And that repeats. D, G, B. Okay, we're gonna do a little exercise here. We've got these open strings with the same names. I'm gonna play the B here, and then the open string of the same name, the very next string. Then I'm gonna move up and play D, on the B string and play the open D string after it and try and make those pitches match perfectly. You can see I've looked away and didn't see where my slide was. Then we go to G's, B's, D's. If you watch my picking hand, it'll show you exactly which string combinations I'm using. So again, on the low string, I'm playing the fourth fret to play B and then I'm playing the open B string next. So your fingers here can't be touching the next string. We'll deal with technique of the hand in another one. That all moves up and I'm playing D's. It moves up, I'm playing G's. Plays B's, a little out of tune there. And D's. Now they're very idiosyncratic ways to play the dobro if I use a pattern like this. rewound the video and saw where I was improvising you'll see where well, I've been using that that pattern a lot because harmonically the material that I'm playing along with is just G major okay then I can do the same thing up at the next inversion the one that starts with D or the one that starts on the fifth of the chord remember G is one B is three D is five okay so now I'm jumping a string here I'm playing with my thumb the seventh fret on the low G string to play the D note Okay. But the open string that I'm going to accompany it with is the, obviously the D string. Okay. So two Ds. Then move up, two Gs. Okay. Move up, two Bs. Back down to the seventh fret, two Ds. Now I don't have another G string up here to match or another um, B string up here to match. So it's really just up to that G. whether you're playing them with the open string or not. I'll just play around that form a little bit and apply some scale and you'll see that I'm using...
So there I'm kind of following the riff. One, three, five. Fifth's at right at the bottom, but G is here. And my riff on the bass that we're hearing is really remember the arpeggio. G, B, D, D, E, D. That's the fifth, six. Or I could do it this way. And use the open strings to make the doubling sound that you're hearing on the bass. Okay, so I'll leave it there, as this was meant to be just an introduction to uh, me and my uh, dobro and the style of tuition that, that I kind of offer. Wrong hand. There we go. So. Yeah, so that was open G, high tuning. Um, remember, sometimes it's called um, bluegrass tuning, GBD, GBD. There are plenty of tunings to get used to. And if you're doing lap steel, um, C6 is quite a common one to start with, but uh, G6 is quite common as well. But you'll notice that there's an additional um, number in that name, six. And innately, you're starting with a slightly more complex uh, idea to start with. Now, that may not be a problem for you, but you're starting off with a slightly more complex harmony. With an open chord, you've got a very um, simplified palette of sounds um, to work from. Uh, that can be quite a good place to start from, but they all have very different characteristics. These six tunings or dominant tunings you get as well, like E9 and things like that, or A7. Uh, relative to op just ones that are tuned to a major chord. And they have different characteristics of types of things that they're good for. Um, I find uh, the open G6 tuning to be very good for uh, melodic playing. And, you know, um, I can get my head around most sort of melodies on it. <laughs> There's not much that I can't kind of um, orientate around easily and coherently around in it, whereas some of the uh, um, six and dominant tunings, there's more variations in it that um, make the irregular patterns of how the strings are tuned, uh, whereas here you've got a very repetitive pattern about how strings are tuned um, that I find very intuitive and easy to use. And it's very close to the standard guitar tuning, so it's, it's a very easy one to navigate to from a guitar. So let me just swap the titling there and give you a little bit of a, um, an idea. So if you're interested in any tuition uh, of any kind or dobro related information and want to spend a little time uh, discussing with it, um, please do drop me a line and we can organize um, a lesson here online and we can go over a variety of resources. Um, there are other platforms to play along with, depending on where you are globally, that might allow us to play, play together, depending on what studio you've got uh, and where you are in the world, what type of internet connection we've got. But otherwise we can use Skype um, or whatever other sort of online platform you generally like to conference on. Um, so I am Gavin Taylor and I do music tuition. So I'm gonna leave you with my usual music tuition um, outro, which is Gavin Taylor Music Tuition. I've just started this Dobro channel. I haven't made new material for it yet, which, uh, hey, skin of the seats as it were. So. Until uh, until next time, cheers! And, oh, the classic, like and subscribe, like, subscribe, and share. I think technically is the is the done thing. Okay, cheers! Bye now. <laughs>